everybody, it's Peter Zombs, Green Flix Adventure 8. Welcome to another video. Today's video is about portrait photography. I set myself a project to go and do a whole bunch of portrait photography over the last couple of months. I wanted to see what lenses, what cameras I decided to choose for the different events, whether they be on location or studio. Let's talk about the events, the different shoots, and the outcomes, and I'll show you the results as well. And there are some surprises, and also probably some not surprises as well, with regards to what I liked and what I didn't like. Let's get on with the show. My choices of cameras were, I've got a whole bunch of here. The Nikon Z9, 24-70, f2.8. Leica SL2, the 24-90, f2.8, and that's a variable aperture, goes up to f4. The Golden Oldie, the Nikon D850, with the 105mm f1.4. All right, so that's in the mirrorless and single lens reflex cameras. And then also I shot my Leica cameras as well. So um, a combination of bodies, mainly the uh, Leica M11 and also the Leica M10R. And the lenses I had for different occasions were the Noctilux 0.95, great lens. I also had the Noctilux 1.2 50mm and also the Similux 1.4 50mm as well. The, um, and then also just to throw into the mix, I also use the 35mm F2 Simicron, the Apo version. So as a starting point, I'd just like to say thank you to all the models. There will be a list of the uh, Instagram uh, links for all the different models that actually participated in this portrait shoot. The arrangements for this portrait shoot was a thing called uh, TFP, Time for Photography. So basically we we're providing each other's uh, time to each other for free so that we can develop our respective portfolios as well. And um, yeah, so if you, if you want to reach out to any of these models, just uh, contact them through their Instagram links. What can we say about <laughs> this combination of cameras and lenses? Uh, just some fundamental differences in all of this. The, the Leica M series is a unique camera format. Uh, it's been around for you know, 50, 60 longer years. Was it developed in... Okay, I'm not a historian, but I'll have some links there as well. The first Leica... You know, the invention of the Leica M camera was back in the 30s, I think. The links, details will be in the video. And then single lens reflex cameras came along, film as well as digital. And the Nikon D850 was probably the last and considered to be, you know, the best DSLR type camera, digital camera, ever made before Nikon went completely mirrorless. The Leica SL2. Um, the reason why I got the SL2 was to use the M lenses on the SL2. Any particular reason for it? Well, okay, at the time I was able to buy the SL2 body for half the price, second hand. So I thought, well, there's nothing wrong with that. I can at least experiment and see how I use it. But I did want to get a, a dedicated SL lens for the SL2. And the one that became available also at half price, luckily, was the 24 to 90. I've really been using that combination so that, that combination works well. And then the Nikon Z9. Now, I always wanted a Nikon body with a vertical grip. I had got the, the vertical accessories for the Nikon D850, as well as the D700, as well as for my D500. But screwing something on and off versus something that's permanently attached and dedicated to the camera, just seemed to be a completely different feel. So I'm happy with the Z9. And obviously Z9 is, you know, the flagship of Nikon mirrorless cameras right now. I've got the 24-70 f2.8 lens. 
I'm actually filming right now with my Nikon Z6. So that was my first foray in the Nikon mirrorless cameras. And I wanted to get it just for the video capability so I could do my YouTube ch channel videos. And I've got the 24 to 70 f4 lens on there. So that, base, that setup is basically remains here in my studio, in my city studio, uh, for my filming of uh, these videos. Um, but when I go out on location, it's either I grab the D500, uh, the D850, the Z9, as far as Nikon ones are concerned, or even the D500, I'll grab as well, particularly when I go out. Um, traveling that seems to be a, a great travel camera all right there's a fundamental size in all these things so the M series cameras and like M series cameras are small and compact so if I want to take photographs out on location and I'm surrounded by people left right and center this is the the most inconspicuous camera I found to use for my portrait shoots I, the locations I chose were in a city and uh, back streets of Sydney, uh, also right smack in the middle of Sydney, uh, the most busiest areas like the Harbour Bridge, the Opera House, Circular Quay, which is the harbour area around Sydney, CBD, and then also beach locations. Surrounded by people in some cases and in other cases more isolated. And then also I shot in my studio. My studio is a is a combination of both my Adventure 8 workshop for my motorcycles and my four-wheel drives as well as my photographic studio so it's just a matter of reshuffling things around. What combinations do I use for different locations? So the cameras used in those locations and we'll be able to show you some photographs taken with the models that posed in those locations as well.
Well, any surprises for you? My observations, my conclusions. Um, I love using my Leica M series cameras. Uh, slow photography, intentional photography. I love using the 50mm wide open. 0 0.95, 1.4 and the, and the 1.2 Noctilux that I have as well. Uh, shooting M, you have to be really careful where you focus, otherwise you're going to miss the focus. Um, depending on the shot and depending on where you're showing it on YouTube or on uh, social media, uh, if you're slightly out of focus, you can get away with it sometimes. But nailing the focus gives you great results, obviously. Now, like ASL2, it's a very specific camera, and um, I enjoy using that as well. I'm yet to use my M lenses on the ASL2, and they'll, I'll probably make that another project and there'll be another video that comes out on that as well. I love using my old Nikon cameras. Um, the D850 without a doubt is an exceptional camera. The more and more I go into mirrorless cameras and electronic viewfinders, the more I appreciate the optical viewfinder and to look through the lens with an optical viewfinder is unbelievable. It's unbelievable to do it during the day. It's unbelievable to do it during the night. Yes, I love it. So that's probably one reason why I like using the optical viewfinder on the M series cameras as well. Why I do use live view when I need to on the back of the screen, but to using the electronic viewfinder is not really my preference at all. The electronic viewfinder on the Z on the Z9 is great. The SL2 is even better. But on the brightest of days, you still notice you now the EVF on the back of in the eyepieces has its limitations. I mean, obviously you see what you get, so that's a, the great advantage of electronic viewfinder is that you can already see what you're gonna photograph and whether your exposure is correct or not, which you don't get on the optical viewfinder. Uh, obviously the Z9 is, Z9 is perfect for video as well as for stills. The SL2 is perfect for video as well as for stills. The M series cameras are only good for stills, no video at all and manual focus, of course. If I'm doing an on-location shoot, my preference is to use the D850 or the Leica SL2. Um, the studio, I, right, the Z9 lends itself really well in the studio. No doubt the Z9 is great for all other locations as well, but I just haven't used it in other locations as mainly for the studio. Do you have all of these cameras, <laughs> like me? Have you put in a lot of money into your photography? Uh, do you have just one of these cameras? And um, do you, are you doing portrait photography? Photographing people versus photographing anything other than people. One big difference is that when you photograph people, they've got an opportunity to communicate with you, to give you feedback on how the shoot's going and also whether they like the photographs afterwards. When you're photographing anything other than people, your subject doesn't complain. Your subject doesn't give you feedback whether they liked it or not. Other people might, but your subject doesn't. That's a big difference between photographing people and not photographing people. And that uh, creates a huge challenge, but it also it gives you a lot of reward too because you're getting feedback all the time before, during and after the shoot. Um, so if I was to pick a genre that I like the most in photography and I find the most challenging, it would be photographing people. From way back when I first started off photography professionally, I suppose you call it that, doing weddings, I found that really exciting and interesting. Organising people, taking the shots, shooting obviously the bride and, uh, and the groom and all the groups and everything else that goes on with it, bridesmaids and groomsmen, etc. I've always enjoyed dealing with people. And I think that's probably what I've enjoyed the most about this particular project of doing TFP type photography with models to create and expand their portfolio, but also to provide material for my YouTube channel, as well as my website and portfolio. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then give it a thumbs up. That's how you support the channel. And um, if you go to myadventure8.com.au, 
website there is a shopping tab there and then all the different affiliate type companies that uh, are working with me if there's anything there and you purchase something using the affiliate code then that's another way of supporting the channel and you might even get some discounts greater than you would get normally from doing that sort of shopping so hopefully that helps you out as well if it's the first time to my channel you haven't already already subscribed then do subscribe press notifications you'll be notified when the next video is out welcome your feedback any comments do you like this sort of photography type videos do you like doing portrait photography you want to see more portrait photography more models let me know look forward to your feedback Thanks again for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers, bye.